Ever wonder how the other half live? My name is Mark Plimsoll, and I wrote WMD Machete as a memoir of a suicidal young man, 22 years old, in 1975. I hated my job in a Midwestern bread factory. I worked with pasty white flower-covered war veterans, maimed survivors who returned from World War II and Vietnam. All they cared about was overtime to make more money. They almost convinced me, but I saw the river of my life would become a torrent of rainy work days that drained straight into the gutters of the rich. I headed south, hitchhiked to Mexico, and there met a scared New Jersey girl on the border. We took a train into the Ocotillo Flats of the Chihuahuan Desert and through the Mexican Grand Canyon, then stared at monkeys and alligators on the Pacific Ocean. I almost got swept out to sea on hurricane waves. Then we got kidnapped by beer-drinking communist truckers who wanted a raper. Luckily, their wives got wind of it. But that's not the story. In Guadalajara, we broke up. I headed for Guatemala because the encyclopedia says they live on a dollar a day, average. That means a whole lot of people live on a lot less. After two semesters of college Spanish, I could ask for food, hotel, and the bathroom and figured I was ready. First time I saw a volcano out the bus window, I knew I wasn't ready. Prophecy reminds us about that stuff. One thing's for certain, no prophet shouts everything's going to be alright and everybody knows they're going to die. This was my suicide mission. Girls drove me crazy, and south of the border they paint their bodies in thin cotton. They wear tight t-shirts and jeans or flimsy sack dresses that go transparent with a little sweat. A good bath lasted about 15 minutes in this heat. Young and old, male and female, or indistinct, we all rubbed against each other. On the streets, in the fruity raw meat market restaurants, we all stood up together in crowded buses, wet as seagrass, and we surged from side to side on the curves. The harder I looked, the more I didn't recognize a damn thing. My English-Spanish dictionary turned into toilet paper. People garbled and cackled like peacocks, tongues thrust between lips too wet. The trees burst into flowers, red, white, and yellow, giant psychedelic broccoli. Everything smelled like sex. In a few months, I enjoyed it and felt like part of the landscape. When I hit the steamy border of Guatemala, I dove right in ready for anything. I headed for the eternal springtime mountains to a lake held high above the ocean by three volcanoes. I lived in a village where Indians wore red clothes they wove themselves. Their language sounded like Japanese. For six months south of the border, I felt trapped, like in science fiction, stranded on another planet the only earthling around. Didn't know if it was another time, another dream, or a parallel universe. I met a photographer without film, a dad who kidnapped his own child, or had a roommate from hell, met a Negro princess, and children threw a poisonous snake at me. I recognized it was all wrong. Plants looked like, my, like they might grab you after dark. Everything built without right angles or nails. There's no permanence. Food, houses, cars, cows, people, everything became garbage. The climate ranged from wet as a French kiss and dry as chapped lips. Most things rot away or crumble in a year or two. The rest stood timeless, cement skeletons, fossils of bad ideas. Look like what happens after the bomb, or maybe what caused the bomb. One thing for sure, I lived in the belly of it, and like a fetus I kicked against the darkness and wanted out. The Saiba tree saved me. I worshipped it as the tree of life, of knowledge, of good and evil. The Saiba tree's buttress roots, like rocket things, remind you of the fanged bloody maybes that sneak into your dreams and make themselves real as monkey wrenches. I took this French girl to bed after she took me to her room in the Spring Hotel. The radio said Guatemala might go to war against Belize the next day. Instead, at three o'clock in the morning, Everyone woke up in Guadalajara. The whole country cracked open like a motorcycle helmet on a 70 mile an hour pavement. The first quake, 7.5 on the Richter scale, lasted about 40 seconds. It displaced an entire river valley a yard and a half. Chasms opened up 9 feet across along a fault line 150 miles long. The vibrations sped through the earth at 14,000 miles an hour. The released energy equaled 30,000 atomic bombs like the one dropped on Hiroshima. 
We felt the mo Earth move all right. An orgasm that killed 23,000 people, injured 600,000, and left the rest of us praying to a God who had just shown us his evil side. For the Catholics, the rosary became a broken anchor chain. Everyone felt his hot breath blowing down our collars. We couldn't sleep and held our breath to listen for the sound of him stamping his Nazi boots in 300 aftershocks just to make sure we all got the message. Don't drink that. Something evil got in the well, Mama. No electricity, no water, leaking gas, broken pipes, rotting bodies. The grocery store shelves collapsed like soap suds. Broken bottles and canned goods vomited through the doors. The army pulled corpses out of collapsed buildings and entire villages, lined them up on the streets in the sun. The rich drew straws for who would stand guard against looters, vandals, and the enraged who lost everything. Most had almost nothing to begin with, and lost some of their family, so it seemed like a good time for civil war. With all this carnage and the monsoon rains on the horizon, the fear of epidemics forced people to keep their heads. Me, I lost my head, I lost my passport, and I lost a French girl. In another month and a half, I limped home and couldn't talk. I painted from memory and wrote it all down. Twenty years later, I reread it, and it took another ten to hammer it into a book. The book's called WMD Machete, a romantic and adventurous creative nonfiction memoir of a global citizen's coming of age. It just might change your life the way it did mine. I became Mark Plimsoll. WMD Machete, a weapon of mass destruction you can carry with you. Just think of it as the Pan American Huckleberry Finn for the 21st century. A book truer than most. Maybe even dangerous. I had no choice. That's how the other half lived.